Hello, folks. It's Professor Fiore once again, continuing our exciting excursion into Python programming. Today, we're going to look at conditionals. In other words, the way in which we can branch in the flow of code so that we can optionally do certain parts of code. Right? So now we don't have a straight line sort of program anymore where we're just going to you know, ask for some input values, do some computations, print out the results. Now things can depend on those results. We can change printouts. We can ask for different things. So the basic thing we're going to look at here, the basic uh, building block is called the if statement. And it looks like this. There's the keyword if, notice the color change. And then we have pair of parentheses. Now in the parentheses, we have a test. We have some kind of relational test, equality test, something like that between variables. So let's do something simple. I'm just going to say A is 1, B is 2. All right, just set two variables up. And I'm just going to do a little check. If A is greater than B, very simple check, here we need a colon. Now, if this is true, we'll do something, right? I'll do a little printout here. Just something simple. Yes, A is bigger. Okay, that's it. Now, in this case, obviously we should not get any printed out at all. Let's see what ends up happening. I got nothing. Okay, so far so good. Let's go back and check this change it. Let's see, A is less than B. Okay. Well, I did change the, <laughs> it's not bigger, but you understand what happened, right? What kind of checks can we do in here? Well, we can do um, less than or equal to, oops, less than or equal to, we can do um, greater than or equal to, greater than, we already saw that. We can do a, an equality test, two equal signs, Right, think of this, or sound this out, if you will, pronounce this as same as, right? Two things, same as, versus this, which is gets, right? Don't do, oops, don't do this. Got to have two equal signs in there. Uh, you can check for inequality, and we use a a not, in other words, a uh, exclamation point on there. All right, so those are all things that we can do. Let's check this one out. If A is not the same as B, we'll change our uh, message. Yes, A is different. Great. Okay. So that's up to us. We can sort of monkey with this whatever tests we need. Now, suppose I want to print out um, something in the converse. In other words, so here's a check for inequality. I could do a separate check for equality. In other words, to say if, if they're the same. So I could take this, just do a quick copy here. And we can say if A is the same as B, you know, a is the same. Oops. Okay. We'll run it. Okay, yes, A is different. Okay, and if I came back here and I change this, so they're both one now, A is the same, right? Well, this kind of... Uh, check for one thing and then a converse check, the opposite check is pretty common. So instead of having to go through this, there is a, a variation on the theme. What we can do is use another keyword, else. In other words, if this is true, do this. Otherwise, else, do this other thing. 
Okay. Okay, yes, S is the same, right? Because the check was, is it not the same? So that was not true. So we take the else. Yes, A is the same. Now notice, this is very important. Notice the indenting going on here. We can have more than one line of code. We can have multiple print statements. And I could just stick another print statement in here. Okay. Another one. Or I'll do the same thing down on the bottom. I can stick one in here. I'll say this is another two, just so that we know they're different. Okay, there, so we know it took this lower one. So it's the indenting that lets us know that we're done. So if I had another print statement down here, and I did not indent it. This is going to get printed. Okay. As a matter of fact, what we'll do is we'll change this so that they're no longer the same. So this is the part that should be taken, not this, not these two statements. All right. So yes, A is different. Another one. There's another three. So this is not indented because it's not indented. This is the very next line of code that's going to be um, executed. Indenting is extremely important. You don't indent, everything gets messed up. So if you decided to do this, I will just get rid of these things. I'm too lazy. I don't want to indent. Look, expected an indented block. All right, it's not going to let you get away with that. Okay. So we have the basic idea here. All right. Let's make a program. What do you want to do? Let's do, um, I'm thinking of doing a little power, uh, a little power rating thing for a resistor. Okay, you know, we know we have resistors. They have, along with their ohmic rating, the resistance rating, they also have a power rating, you know, so many watts. And I want to make sure that, uh, you know, these things don't blow up, right? Burning resistors are not good. Generally speaking, the addition of fire to electronic circuits is a bad thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, we'll ask the user for the voltage across the resistor, we'll ask for the resistor uh, ohmic value, and we'll ask for the power rating. And we can do the computation and see whether or not, see here's the if, whether or not that resistor is appropriately rated. Okay, and if it's not, then we know that you know we need to increase the rating. So I'm going to need three input statements. So the voltage will say, uh, remember, we're going to use our input statement here. And the input always gives us back a string. So we have to use the float function to turn the string back into a float so we can do some math on it. Okay, so I'll just say enter the voltage in volts. All right, so the second parenthesis here closes the float function. I need one for the resistor value, so I'll just do a quick copy and paste. Paste. All righty, and then we need the power rating. So let's call this uh, P rated, right? That's the rated power. So now what we need to do is compute the actual power. Right? So P actual, we can get that from V squared divided by R. So you could either do V raised to the second power, you can, or you can just say V times V, right? Your choice, divided by R. 
Now here comes the if. If P rated, you can do this either way. You can either say if P rated is bigger than P actual, everything's fine. You can say it is if P rated is smaller than P actual, you got a problem. Or you can do it the other way around again, which is say you could say compare P actual to P rated rather than P rated to P actual. It doesn't really make any difference. You know, you just have to compare the two things. So how do you want to do it? All right. Um, yeah, I said it one way. Let's do it the opposite way. So if P actual is greater than P rated, we have a fault. All right. This thing can sort of blow up on the launch pad. We don't want that. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to tell the user that there's a problem here. Okay, so we can say, um, because the actual is bigger than the rated, and we can say the resistor is underrated. It needs to have a bigger rating. Okay. Now, we might include in here the actual power, just so they know. Okay. We'll say required, right, actual power is, and we'll just be simple about this, p actual watts. Okay, you could get a little fancier in here and use the uh, format specifier thing uh, that we looked at last time. Our choice, for now, we'll just leave it like this. Now our else clause, okay. Now the auto the auto indent is handy to a point. The problem is we don't want that else to be indented. This else has to line up with this if. All right. The only stuff that gets indented is the actual code that's associated with the if and the else. All right, so P actual is greater than P rated. So this thing is going to blow up, so to speak. So we give the message, tell them the actual power. Otherwise, see, the else comes in here. Otherwise... Um, we say everything's fine, right? Resistor rating is okay, is sufficient, is, um, you know, however you want to say that. Okay. So again, we could have done this as a separate test. We could have said if P actual is greater than P rated, do this, and then say if... P actual is, you know, less than P rated, or P rated is bigger than P actual, however you want to do that. Resistor rating is sufficient. Do two separate ifs. But, you know, having the if and the else clause together, very convenient. It's something we do a lot. All right, so let's run this. Maybe there's an error in here. I don't really know. Okay, uh, let's try 10 volts. And... Um, Say 20. Okay, so this should burn up on us. Yep, the resistor is underrated. The actual required power is 5 watts. All right, so let's run this again. I'm going to use the same voltage and the same resistance, but this time we'll use an appropriate power rating, right? Like 10 watts. Okay. All right, resistor rating is efficient. Beautiful. So this is a powerful little idea, this idea of a conditional. Right? We can change what the, what the sort of flow of the code is depending on other values. And this can get much more complicated, as we'll see. Uh, we can have things like if statements inside if statements. You know, you can have uh, input statements inside these if and else clauses to get different values, you know, to make choices for things. We could have big menus that would go through and Know, pick out appropriate values or perform operations in association with the values, the menu values that we've chosen. So we'll pick this up next time, looking at these sort of extended ideas on our basic if else. See you then.